Hello and welcome to season four, episode 11 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm winded because I ran. <laughs> Happy Thursday, everybody. I hope that you are had a wonderful weekend since last week. I don't see anyone chatting on that. So that one must not be working. Why isn't that working? So right, I have this... Hello, everybody. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. We are in the middle of moving. So I'm moving, running around. I already have my fabric inked that I'm going to color with today. Hello, Brenda, Tina, Amy, Better Days, Ellen. Hi, everybody. Hi, Brenda. And Patricia and Winnie. Hello. Yes, today's lesson is really fun and I didn't have to think too much to do it. I just kind of splattered some paint on or ink on fabric using really just a bottle of diluted water and put ink in, shook it up and then just dropped it on there. I didn't back the fabric with anything. I just laid it down on this board and just set it down and just started dripping on it. I wanted the colors to blend into one another or I would have used the hold light like I've done before. So just an ordinary canvas board is what I use. I got to restart the chat. I don't know why it's not working on my computer. I ran. I can still run. So this is what I ended up with. Not the prettiest thing. And actually the colors look a lot better than they do on this camera for some reason. Maybe you'll be able to see it better. On this camera, let's see here. This is some of the inking I've done before using free motion quilting. But today we're going to do free motion embroidery. And there's a better representation of the colors that we're using. And of course, I'll be using my little elbow pads today. So I have a, I have the variegated thread on from last week's lesson, which might be fun because the idea of this is to kind of doodle, look at the shapes and draw around them and then create some type of design from what I'm seeing here. For some reason, this chat's not working on here. I click something and messed that up, but it's all right. I got my phone. My eyes are blurry. I think I'm not getting enough sleep. Another way that you could do this, if you don't feel talented about randomly drawing, you can take fabrics that already have designs on them and just color around them. And this is the Octi Hoop with the stick and tear on the back side that holds the fabric down for you so that you can go ahead and color on your fabric. Okay, now now we've got this chat working. Yay. And in the Octi hoops is what I'm going to use. If you have another embroidery hoop that you can do free motion with, you're more than welcome to to use yours. These are the Octi hoops found at creativefeet.com and supporting our dealers that support our products. This is the fabric and I need to attach it to one of the hoops. And I was trying to limit myself to not have too much room <laughs> because I am limited on time right now. So I did a little piece of fabric, but you could have, you could do a large piece as large as you like. And I will show why. I don't know if I ever get enough sleep, but lately it's worse than normal. 
Thickened tear is one of our stabilizers. It is the stabilizer with the tree frog on the label. And I have a bunch of it already in my drawer. The best size roll to get is the 12 inch because it fits all of the three different sizes should you want to get into the fiber art part of this. <sighs> all right. So I'm going to put the biggest hoop because, oh, why not? Lay this down on top of the softer side or the stabilizer side of the stick and tear. And stick and tear is a pressure sensitive, temporary. My pinky now got really yellow from the inking. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. It's stained. So make sure you wear gloves when you use the inks. If you don't want your manicure to get messed up, Trying to find a pen. Here we go. So now I just draw around the frame. Try not to get the pen on the frame itself. Keep it on the stabilizer instead. I kind of tip the pen a little bit so that it doesn't make my frame black. However, if you use one of the friction pins or iron eraser, or different type of pen other than a Sharpie, you don't have to worry about it. I just slide the hoop off and cut to fit the frame. If I were making an embroidery project on a towel or a minky fabric or any real stretchy fabric like a t-shirt, I would also back the fabric with our hold light stabilizer. But today we're just embroidering on a single layer of cotton fabric. So I don't need to also stabilize the back. These are little scraps that we can use to patch. And you just kind of fold one corner and I fold it both directions. Try to get it a little bit baggy, get it to separate from the paper that is on the reverse side. So the shiny side is the paper that we're going to release. It's actually called a release liner and it's got a real good hold on it. I should use my glasses for this too. Today, I need my glasses for everything, it seems. Why fight it? There we go. So I peel off one side a couple inches down and then fold the paper down and then with the hoop on a smooth surface just lay that down. Try to line it up so that it is on the edge of the hoop. And then with my hand holding it down on this, I just go ahead and peel it over. And that's on there, but not tight enough. Hello, Wendy. And Winnie, if I didn't say, oh, you, you got snow. We had rain for 24 hours and boy, <laughs> I wouldn't do well living in a state that gets a lot of rain. I get kind of gloomy when there's solid cloud for a long stretch. It's one thing when we have the monsoon and it's thunder and lightning. It's another thing when it's just a, a drizzly kind of rain for long stretch. 
so now I have a tight I can see a little little bit of a wave in that uh oh hold on while I sorry about that and there's probably going to be a ring at the door because I forgot to put my don't ring the doorbell sign. Actually, I didn't forget. I have a new cell phone arriving today. We are going to be going away from these landlines and having a cell phone for creative feet. Because I had a lot of you go, can I text you a picture of this? And, and I'm like, no, because it's a landline. So we are switching to cell phone. Now this is sticky and it is really tight. That's me tapping on it, putting it up to the microphone so you can hear it. Now I'm under the pressure of trying to figure out what this fabric is going to end up being. So what design am I going to do? You just lay it down. Now say I wanted to go all the way to here. After I do a large portion in here, I can just pick it up and put a new piece of stabilizer on it and then go ahead and finish the outer edges of it. I'm sorry, did you say 97 inches? I've seen some amazing photos of the snow in like Lake Tahoe being looks like 20 feet high. It's amazing. How exciting. I'm a little nervous because I really don't, I have no idea. And that's the whole point of this. This is a challenge for your creativity. It's a attempt at releasing your fear of making things look the way they should because if there's nothing on here to begin with then how can you do it wrong you can only do it wrong if you decide it's wrong i have no presser foot on the machine because you do not need one with the octahoops which makes it a lot easier i could go ahead and take a pen and start to and this is what's it's kind of trending on uh, YouTube right now for artists to draw. So they're they're sending each other paper with with color on it, and then the other artist then films a little drawing of what they visualize on this. And I'm visualizing a little fish there, so I'm going to make them into a fish. And I think I'm just going to leave the variegated thread on because it's on and it makes it so I don't have to do as much. You, you can use uh, any type of decorative thread that you like on this. You can use rayon, metallic. Actually, I think I am going to not use the variegated because I have a feeling I'm going to really like this. But this is the variegated thread I used last time. And... He's a yellow fish, and I'm thinking a yellow and black fish is more common in the ocean. This is the Polyfast number 6581, available at creativefeet.com under products and threads. And it's 40 weight and it's just lovely thread. So we're going to kind of do like a cartoonish drawing. Otherwise, I might get carried away and I may start embroidering on this. And the whole idea is to find the design. After you find the design, if, I, if you want, you can go back in and you can add more color. But the first thing is to trace designs and make it into a piece of art. <laughs> I love doing something I've never done before. If you don't have one of these needle threaders, we have a handheld needle threader that is very popular. Have any of you used yours yet that got them? They're the perfect needle threader. Look at me, I'm just, I'm yellow everywhere. 
And I rinsed it in a sink and I got to bleach out the sink. So you can see this little hook back there. Maybe you can. So small. Well, you can see really good close-up pictures. This is under supplies at creativefeet.com. Here we go. So I'm going to doodle around that round yellow shape. I'll bet some of you thought I was going to make a sunflower or something instead of fish. But I'm in a fishy kind of mood here, I think. I'm taking my thread and I straight stitch, lowering my needle tension to 3.0 from its normal 4.0. Where is the camera angle I want? So I have my elbow resting on my elbow pad. And another one on this side for this elbow. So elbows down, shoulders relaxed. And you can choose any one of the eight holes on the hoop to place the handle in, which is this little green handle. You do receive two in the kit if you have the octa hoops and you, if you ever lose your handle or put them in a safe place and then you can't find them. We have them on the octa hoop page, should you need them. And uh, they're very important for being accurate because just like when you write, you actually put your paper down, rest your hand on the paper, put your hand down on your table, and then you use your fingers to write, that is the same posture we get to use with the octahoops, which is what makes it a lot easier than any other method of free motion where you normally have to hold the frame and raise your elbows and move both hands and try to steer. So with this, I get to just put my body in a rested position, which I really need today because I hurt my left shoulder. <sighs> We're moving. Went to the chiropractor yesterday. I'm gonna have to go again tomorrow. I didn't have a chance to put my lipstick on. So this is the position I'm in and I'm going to put the camera back on the up close so that you can see me just start drawing. And I'm going to, I'm gonna start with this little tail area. I'm gonna start below. Bring that bobbin thread up. And I have a gray bobbin thread on the machine right now. Oh, this machine had one of the lights pop up and I don't know why it did that. Hello, Brandy. Brandy, Brenda. Windy. All right, here we go. I didn't know if I was going to go live today till an hour ago or so. so. Now I'm going to just create from the actual ink that is dripped onto the fabric. So these are lovely scissors for from the Apple Quick Company that you can cut really close to your work. All right, fish have scales and they also have Bins. And you know what? I, I'm not drawing any particular fish because I just really have no idea. But I think this fish has like a little ear kind of shape that comes up. Now we're going to put give him an eyeball. And he's got his lips open. And I'm going to come back over here. <laughs> and here we go. One pin and another pin. All right. What do you think? Is he looking like a fish? Not my best work. It's kind of fun. This is his eyeball. <laughs> All 
All right, so what do fish have? They release little bubbles. Now, if I had a pin, I could actually lift, raise the pin and not have the bubbles be connected by the string. We're not doing, we're not using a pen, we're using a sewing machine. Let's see, what else can we do? So let's see, this is, let's say this is coral. Getting a little uncomfortable, so I'm going to turn it around and make sure my elbows are down always. Just kind of a makeshift round for the sea floor. I'm going to go ahead and lower the feed dogs now because I hadn't done it yet. So you can see you don't have to. Know that I can barely look at the feed when I'm doing free motion. So what do we have on the sea floor? And I'm trying to remember how they look. We have a lot of starfish, right? <laughs> starfish probably have less legs than this, but we'll give it some more ground. What do you think? Is it fun? I'm having fun. I'm so glad that I watched his video and his name is Jazza, if I didn't mention it. I'm going to put his, the link to his video. He's a really fun YouTuber to watch. Something just made my machine stop. Why did it stop? I don't know. So let's see. All right, what are you running out of bobbin? It's not telling me why it's stopping. I'm just going to check out the bobbin. It's fine. Why are you stopping me? It's really weird. There's nothing wrong. It's almost like someone's in here and just tapping the start stop button. Probably some setting I have, and I'm not used to using the, the feed dogs down. I'm going to raise the feed dogs because it wasn't doing that before. Let's see how well it goes. All right, we got ground. We got to do some more. We got to do something else, something fun. Shape. Now the stitch doesn't look right. All right, come on, Claire. You're in the ocean floor. Well, we'll do another fish. It's more yellow here. This one doesn't have as nice a form as the other one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm making him look right. At all. This one's got his mouth shut. <laughs> He's skinny. The other one's chubby. Mm, he, he needs some bubbles. Let's see. I'm 
coming up on some more pink. I could make uh, a little sea urchin. Sea urchins have lots of little sticky things coming out of them. You know which fish got all the food. <laughs> or this is the... All right, we can tell our own little stories. That's for sure. What is this? We're going to do another little longer tail. Skinnier little fish. I call it. <laughs> I'm so quiet when I have to think. They don't all have the same markings. This one, these are a different kind of fish. Have you ever seen a humu humu nuku nuku wapa wa'a, you guys? Blue and yellow fish in Hawaii. There's a little bit more of a smooth floor here, but now we got the little fish. The little school of fish here. What do I say? I say, if you are consistently inconsistent, then things look like a pattern. This one's really challenging because they don't have any, the dots aren't the same. So my brain is having to kind of think, all right, how can I make them all look like fish? Do they look like fish? We got little fish, we got medium sized fish. Here's a big fish, or is it, or is it a, what is this you guys, can you guess yet? Looks like a blob. <laughs> oh, a turtle. I could have done a turtle. I'm doing this all out of my head, you guys. I'm, bear with me. It's uh, making a knock. And they do kind of just look like that when they're swimming around. So let's see. Get another. What are you saying? There is two thread. Everything's fine. Stop it. Oh, I'm starting to get sleepy. That's the thing about this is so relaxed. Jellyfish. Is it a jellyfish? I don't know. I can't remember what their faces look like, but now I want to do a sea turtle really bad. Can I do a sea turtle from my mind? Fishy. 
whatever this is. It's something. It's something pink, and it's in the ocean. I do undersea things with paint. But this kind of borders on writing with a pen, and my, my uh, handwriting is not the neatest. When I did the design and was inking, I did not think I was going to do undersea. I saw sunflowers and little pink flowers. <laughs> Part of this is getting to the, getting where you want to go. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. I did not shape it. They have little tails. And then they have the edge of their shell that goes all the way around. And they have little sections. Could have done more blue if I knew. Of course, remember, you can always go back afterward after you've outlined and fill things in with your thread. But this is just a really fun project. the sea turtle's head on. Oh. My first snag. Are you guys having a good time? I didn't cut the bobbin thread, so I don't need to bring it back up again. Unless the bobbin thread is the issue that it was having. Kind of wish I could bring in my sea turtle painting, but it's been moved. I'm trying to remember how I how I painted it. The arms come like this. Have the head, and here I have to be concerned with the hoop frame. Don't want to hit the frame. And depending on your angle, you wouldn't see all of, you wouldn't see them all exactly the same shape. They also have like these shapes to them. Coming back over to the turtle's head. I may have those eyes in the wrong spot. There's the machine stopping again on its own. And they 
also come up. I have like a center out. <laughs> well, piece of thread there was jumping around like it was on a trampoline. Now what should I draw, you guys? Do you see another shape? We'll give his tail a little. Sure. Come out from over here. Make it look like some more coral. Sea turtles do love hanging out in the coral. Turn it right side up again. What do you think, you guys? This is fun. <laughs> okay, so we got a sea turtle. We're just missing a dolphin. If I did a dolphin to fit on this fabric, it would make the dolphin really far away. Unless it was a baby. I can normally draw a dolphin, but I don't know if I have enough room. What else is on the seafloor? We have seashells, right? Clam shells. Nestled in the... Boy, I can't remember how what anything looks like right now. It's so funny. No pressure. <laughs> Time is it? What am I doing? Got a little crab with the eyeballs sticking out. Oh, a seahorse. That would be good. Do crab. And I was thinking he needs my ball. Kind of a cartoony feel. More little fish over here. Seahorse. Oh, we have no seagrass. Can't have a seahorse without something to hold on to. Okay, seahorse from my memory. <laughs> 
No pressure. We got another big fish here. While I think about the horse, just draw another fish. Another chubby one. Okay. <laughs> no pressure. Just draw from nothing. This is definitely a fun challenge. Getting close to the frame again. You guys like the crab. Got the scales going the wrong way. This guy's a little challenged. Got backward scales. One point. <laughs> this would have been so fun to do when my kids were little. I can't wait till I have a grandkid and I can do this kind of thing with them. Nemo. Can I picture Nemo? Ah, no. And all this without tying a knot makes it this could be something you could do on a quilt except for on a quilt you wouldn't have your I forgot what I was saying because I'm trying to think of the seahorse now the horses have like a little mane. Sometimes they have these big wings. Try to get his head in there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It almost looks like a seahorse. Maybe I need to give him more of a and a more pronounced eyeball. <laughs> well, what can I say? All this from my head. I feel like I had wine. I'm a little loopy. Creating from my memory. What else? Anything else? A Nemo. Yeah. I don't think I can do Nemo. There's not a lot of room left, you guys. I was trying to... It's like, you think I could remember how to draw a nice shell. They have those conch shells. Oh well. I think I'm going to stop. And the idea was to go short today because I'm moving. It's a little challenging to do the show today. This this uh, 
room is gonna get torn down and I really miscalculated on the size of the studio over there so it's not bigger and uh, so I'm being challenged on how to structure things cut the thread and show you the whole thing with the top camera with it right side up this time instead of what I normally do <laughs> I think it's good, you know, I mean, we'll buy this fish. That 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 is not the fish's face right here, but because I did put that there, it kind of made the fish look like he's got a bigger face. <laughs> what do you think? Awesome. That's pretty fun. And then you just tear the back away. But I could go in with a little, a little thread. You guys want me to do one like like I could fill in Mr. Crab or should I leave it and stop doing what I normally do which is too much and then I'm like running out of time I'm gonna stop I'm gonna be disciplined but there we go this is really truly what lies beneath the brush strokes <laughs> because you have no idea what you're gonna create until after you have your design or your ink or your paint down there and I hope you guys will give this a try if you're new to my channel and you've yet to subscribe I sure hope you'll do so today and if you haven't joined create with Claire my online school the link is in the live chat and will be in the description below the video should you be watching this on the replay this is March 16th of 2023 and we are in the process of relocating our location not far from where we are creative feed is getting plucked out of my home and put into a business location and i'm looking forward to not having work be constantly on my mind and my home life is i'm going to be living with a, with a couple girlfriends for a little while while i wait to be able to buy a home in the area so a lot of really fun stuff going on in my life right now making me a little bit loopy <laughs> if there isn't a show next week it's because I couldn't do it but I'm trying I want to and who knows what I'm, I'm gonna be up to next week on the show if you like this video go ahead and hit that like button and let's see as I mentioned be sure to subscribe to my channel so you're notified whenever I go live and for uploads of my sewing videos. This is the sewing channel and I am opening an art channel soon called Beyond the Breaststrokes. Have just released a novel called Beyond the Breaststrokes. I sure hope you'll give it a read. And with that, I'm going to go because I'm starting to ramble. Thank you guys so much. I love you. See you next week. I hope. Crossing fingers. <laughs>